Hey guys, welcome to Mega Man X Legacy Collection, where there are four Mega Man X games to play. I am playing this on the Switch, so it goes portable. And I do portable games on my channel, so this works out just fine. We have Mega Man X 1, 2, 3, and 4. I could play the English or Japanese versions. I'm just going to stick to English versions just because. There are some extra things. I'm going to be doing everything these collections offer. So I'm going to play the games. And I'm going to get the... Wrong one. I'm going to get the Hunter Medals. Which, there are 52 of them. There are some that are unknown. And then some of them are for the new thing called X Challenge, which is on the bottom. I will do the X Challenge after I play through the games. But first, we start off with Mega Man X. And as you know, this game came out way back when, in 1993, where it's actually weird not seeing licensed by Nintendo on the screen, even though I'm playing the Switch version, so technically they could have kept it there. <laughs> I forgot about the screen. This is so unrealistic. Available memory, 32,768 terabytes with um, the data cache and the instruction cache, just like 768 kilobytes. It's like nothing. I'm, I'm going to skip this. But the terabytes on the other hand, that's completely different. So yes, I am playing on a Switch controller, so, or Pro controller, so it should be rather comfy. It should be about right anyway. But yes. The X Collection offers these little options right here where you can select a wallpaper for each game. I have it off just for the sake of my uh, border. That was weird. I like jumped. I don't know. I heard the Switch version had a couple issues, but I have a feeling the reviews were just like thinking of like... They are probably thinking of it wrong. They were thinking that the slowdown was part of the Switch version. Also, the graphic... Uh, the X Collection has like graphics moving options. I have it turned on just because it helps a little bit because I have the game like in a full screen window. If I did it to a point where the game was the correct size, it would look a little, it would look good. But honestly, I, it's going to be a YouTube video. So it's, it's not going to show up too much on my recording setup. And I am doing so bad. I've never seen that actually happen before. Never seen the bridge completely go away like that. There we go. That's essentially how it's supposed to go. I'm not supposed to get hit by anything. But I'm getting hit like crazy because I am screwing up and I'm talking. A while back, I played this game as a randomizer. And that actually was really bad. <laughs> it, was, it was a fun time because I took the game I know and love and just changed it into something that I'm like, what is going on? I had no idea. <laughs> And I think one of the bosses took me like an hour or so to beat just because I had his health so far off the screen. Because you can randomize how much health they had. It's a fun time if you want to look into it, but it is a ROM, so... Legality reasons, things like that. I don't know. Which, um... By the way, recently, like, it's been... Nintendo's been, like, up in arms about ROMs lately. They've been going... And just getting rid of a bunch of sites to a point where some sites are actually getting scared and getting rid of ROMs and stuff. And it's kind of neat, but at the same time, it's like causing a bunch of sites to take... Wow. Shoot, X. Thank you. It's just taking away ROMs of other systems of stuff that you can't access anymore. From like the 80s or something. Like not even Nintendo. Like the Atari, which say do sell some of those games, but then you have like other ROMs that are like way old and abandonware. There, there is a lot of things, I guess you could say, about ROMs that people are going up in arms about. Like, oh, we're losing all these things and stuff like that. I, I do understand, but at the same time, there's a lot of stuff that Nintendo, in their case anyway, they sell some of these games but then there's games where like they're just not on the market anymore period and it just doesn't make sense to have them taken away but i i do understand i i get it it's just who knows at this point okay vile take me just do it just do it we understand how this works i like how <laughs> i love how the game programming makes it so he can't hit you like you'll just like back up you worthless piece of scrap metal. Did you think you could defeat me? 
Oh yeah, I love the stereo. It always comes in the left ear. And then the shot is on sort of both ears, but it's coming more out of the right ear. I guess I'm not powerful enough to defeat him. X, you shouldn't expect to defeat him. He is designed to be a war machine. Remember, you have not reached full power yet. But you can now for $2.99! If you use all the abilities you were designed with, you should become stronger. You may even become as powerful as I am. I'll scout ahead and collect as much information on Sigma's fortress as I can, meaning I'm not going to be playable. I'll meet up with you when you get there. See you later. Actually, I know you can do it, and I skipped the text on accident, but whatever, I knew what he was going to say. And yes, they had actually added a save feature, so I'm going to save. Cool. So we have eight Mavericks to deal with. We're starting, it has Launch Octopus on the start, which we're not doing first, that's stupid. Chill Penguin, Flame Mammoth, Boomer Quanger, or Boomerang Quanger, depending on which version of the game you're playing, Sting Chameleon, Spark Mandrill, Storm Ego, and Armored Armadillo. You can also look up their specs by, hello? Click, there it goes. It's weird, you have to click B. You can see like all the information, it's pretty neat. I, I do like that, I'm probably gonna, have stuff on the sidebar and stuff, who knows. Oh yes, <laughs> his attacks are shotgun, ice, and sliding. Let's do it! Game. There we go, that's weird. <laughs> I was like hitting the button and it wasn't working. Chill Penguin. I don't know how many of these I'm gonna get through, like, and I'm not sure how many Mavericks I'm going to get through in every single episode. But we'll see how it goes. I do intend on playing through both collections. So it's going to be a while. It's going to be a long series to say the least. But I'm not going to do all the games in like one go. There will, like, there will be breaks in between. Maybe it'll probably be like Mega Man X and Mega Man X2. Then I'll take like a little short break. Then I'll come back to it, do X3 and 4. Take another little short break. Depending, because then after those four, all that's left is the Hunter Medals and things that I might not have gotten. So that's essentially how I'm thinking about going about this. But it's a fun time. Mega Man X is like a series that needed a collection. Which it did have one way back when, and why aren't you firing? There we go, that's so strange, it's not like working. Could be because I'm using a, like, a pro controller. Ooh, nice. But at the same time, I'm like far away. And the joys of emulation. Every single time you go up to that area, I swear on the original SNES version, it does not go that far. But if you emulate it, it will show that background like there's supposed to be something there. So you've come. X, I gave you the ability to choose your own path in life. And I hope the world will allow you to choose a peaceful one. But now it seems that you are destined to fight. Because I thought the world might need a new champion. I have hidden capsules like this one. If you find and use them, you'll be able to increase your powers. Beyond anything the world has ever known. Step into this capsule and receive the acceleration system to boost your speed. Good luck, X. Otherwise known as dashing. Fun fact, dashing is actually supposed to be... A feature you start with in Mega Man X, but they felt like it'd be better if you like learned it instead of just having it right away because it it makes your move it makes it seem like an upgrade and you get more movement out of it versus if you had it in the beginning then you just have it and it's like whatever every game past the Mega Man X you start with the dash but then your leg parts gives you something different to go with it. So that's, it's pretty nice, to say the least. But, now we're on the next part of the stage. That's fun. Really, game? <laughs> I did not click up. <laughs> dash, dash, da, really? That is so strange, you can't dash there. Huh. I'm not sure if that's an emulation error or what. Okay, now, now it's doing it right. That's so strange. Jump. Eh. Stop. 
Stop and work right, thank you. <laughs> Jeez, that's so strange. I wonder if it is the Pro Controller or if I'm because I'm using Bluetooth or what. Or it's because I'm looking at my capture footage instead of like the actual screen. So it could just be screwing up because of that. Jeez, I cannot play. Wow. I'm doing so bad. <laughs> if you want to watch a stream where I do good, go and watch my stream. <laughs> I did good and uh, it was a randomizer. I wonder if I should just die against Chill Penguin. I could probably still beat him without getting touched, even with this low health. But who knows? Let's see how this goes. You already hear that whirring the entire time I play this game? Oh well, I got hit. That's fine. Whatever. I'm not gonna complain too much. Uh, that's fine. Let's go that way. Now, if I was playing this on an emulator, I probably would not have been able to do that properly. I mean, this is an emulator, but you get it. <laughs> really, game? I was on the wall. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I died against Joe Penguin. I'm switching to- I want to switch to the TV so I can look at the TV footage instead of my capture so I can play this better. Wow. Wow. I, uh, I'm going to see about doing something in between episodes. Make my playing better. <laughs> wow. I died against Joe Penguin. I- Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, everything seems weirdly delayed. It's definitely the fact that I'm using a wireless controller. There is definitely like some sort of input lag going on. For people that don't know, wireless controllers like introduce like so a bit of latency between when you press a button and when you see something on the screen. That's the easiest way to describe it. Like when I when I shoot, it might not happen right away. It'll take a little bit for the action to happen. So I'm gonna have to play with that in mind because I am playing, really? That's fine. I am playing with the wireless controller and I don't think I have any other option with the Switch because it's always gonna be wireless. Unless I'm connected directly, then I don't think it's wireless anymore. But I'll need to find that one out. Actually, I think there is a, oh cool, it shows them. So there probably is a way to do that. I am not quite sure. I have to find out about that one. Find out exactly. Huh. <laughs> I'm not really sure about that. Got shotgun ice and I get this. I got a little bit more time on this episode so I can do another one. Okay. People may see this choice as weird because the weakness order in terms of this chill penguin then it goes to spark mandrel but i always do storm eagle next because i do <laughs> let's see his attacks are storm tornado and diving all right let's do this storm eagle this isn't hard again but I know there's a way to make the Pro Controller act as a wire controller through the Switch. Then I probably won't have any more input lag to say- I mean, I will because of TV. <laughs> okay, let me explain this completely. There are two types of lag. It's <laughs> a lot of technical information in this episode, I get it, but it is something- it is a actually good excuse to why I'm not doing as well as I should be. Because this is a Super Nintendo game from way back when, a SNES game. A SNES game played on a, a TV that had like the big like backing thing. For people that don't know, it, they're called like two TVs or CRT TVs. They look like a giant, like almost like a house with how big they are. For people that are too used to HD TVs that don't know what they are. They had a better refresh rate than HDTVs do because it didn't play content at like a, such a high resolution. And it was almost constant, like you would never have any problems with it. But with TVs nowadays, 
the refresh rate isn't always constant. And if you use uh, game content, that basically they, they introduce like a latency effect where the signal takes a little bit longer to get to the TV. Even if you use like better HDMI cables and things like that, it does help, but the TVs themselves have a natural sort of lag to them. Which is why if you have an HD TV, you'll know a thing called game mode, where it turns off all the special features of the TV to make everything work faster. You don't get as good as a picture, but if you're playing like a video game, you're gonna want exactly how it's supposed to look. You don't get the best refresh rate out of it though, so you still have some sort of lag, but it's not as bad, which is why that is a big selling point for TVs nowadays. It's like, oh hey, it's like called milliseconds. So it, I'm not sure why I'm doing it like this, but I'm not taking any chances. But since this is pretty much, really, this is pretty much emulated on the Switch on an HD TV, it's not gonna have the lag of the TV itself, like upscaling the content, because that is a thing as well. Because if you have a lower signal, it has to upscale the content to make it look better, which introduces a little bit of lag. This is played through HDMI, which is not gonna have that issue. But the TV itself also has like an inherent latency and lag issue. Which then I bring it through my capture card. I, I don't know why I'm going so far into this, but I'm just basically explaining my bad performance in one the first episode. <laughs> but yeah, so if I like tap the button, he'll jump way later than he's supposed to. Because the TV takes a little bit to get to catch back up. Like even though I'm like basically I'm reacting to the game on like a picture that happens later than it should. Like let's see. I'm I'm standing still right now just to just to show what I mean. I'm going to tap B right now. It looks like it's happening immediately. But if you sit there and like have a uh, if you have something to test that, if you look at it, like basically I can look at my footage if I when I'm like recording, I can basically go like like, I can hear myself clicking the button on my mic and sync it up. And it just won't look right. Because I'm hitting the button way earlier than he actually jumps. It's not terrible, but the PS4 version, I think, has this worse. I don't know about the PC version. I, ha I actually don't personally know. But it's basically all wireless controllers. If you're using a wired controller, it's not as bad because... The inputs happen a little bit quicker. But you still have the inherent lag from the TV itself. Anyways, enough of that. I played through the entire stage explaining TVs to people. It was probably really boring. Some people are probably like, yeah, I like that. I'm done explaining technical stuff. We are playing a game about robots after all, and we gotta deal with the technicals of that. <laughs> so I'd rather deal with that. Storm Eagle has some weird attacks, but nothing too inherently broken. You can just use your buster. Really? I have always hated that about Mega Man X games. And heck, even the original Mega Man did that as well. Where if you're holding down the buster to... Really? Land already. Okay, there we go. Like you'll do a shot, then you'll do like a little pellet. They have an invincibility frame. So you might hit them with the little mini shot instead of the one you're actually intending to hit like that. Like, I turned around a little too quickly, so I wound up shooting my little pellet at him instead. And I did one damage versus how much I could have done. Basically, like, I gotta let go of the button after I turn, which kind of delays my reaction time. Wow, I just realized I'm still talking technical stuff. <laughs> oh, well. But yeah, I'm pretty, this boss is pretty much fine. I'm not, I'm not gonna have any issues. Yes, I just realized that I got the head part and I didn't even talk about it. The head part allows me to break bricks, Have if you notice, they demonstrate what they do in this game. I just pellet shot it. All my big shots went the opposite way and I kept pelleting him. Because, uh, I don't get why, like, it, you're hitting it one time, but for some reason it still does two shots. I don't get it. 
Either way, that's two of them. So let's see what we got now. We got the Storm Tornado. I said it before, it even showed up on screen. Otherwise known as probably the most broken weapon in the game. It's good. There are other ones that are better. But I don't really think it has any real downsides. So yes. Next time on Azure Plays Mega Man X Legacy Collection, where we're in Mega Man X, I'm going to go to the weakness, Spark Mandrel. His attacks are Electric Spark and Dash Punch. I'll see you guys then.